The shear gouge ratio is a parameter that estimates the composition of fault rocks in sedimentary basins. It was developed for sandstone shale successions and is now widely used to estimate fluid transmissibility of fault zones in these successions in sedimentary basins. In this short video, I'm just going to go through how we calculate the shale gouge ratio. This is the expression. The shale gouge ratio is equal to the sum of shale thicknesses divided by the throw times 100 to get it into a percentage, and it applies to individual points along specific fault zones. So let's see how this works. Here's a stratigraphic succession. It's based on some real stratigraphy, which was a binary succession of sandstones and uh, claystone siltstones, in other words, shale, shown here in yellow and purple, respectively. So here's our expression. Let's see how we apply it. So let's fault the succession. So now we've changed how different parts of the stratigraphic column are juxtaposed against each other. So for an individual point on the fault, the shale gouge ratio is equal to the sum of the shale thicknesses that have passed that point on the fault, divided by the throw, and then multiplied by 100 to get our expression into a percentage. So we'll look at two locations along this particular faulted sandstone shale succession. And we'll go through the workflow. So the first part of the workflow is to fix a location on the fault, which we've done here. It's our first location. And then we measure the throw. Next, we identify those shale intervals that have moved past that point on the fault. We've specified the point in the foot wall, so we want to identify those shale intervals in the hanging wall. Here they are. And these are their individual thicknesses. Let's just add them together. So that's the sum of the shale thicknesses, sigma z. And as we can see, that equates to a thickness of 8.0 metres. The throw, in the meantime, is 26.25 metres. So we now plug these values into our SGR formula. And here they are. Just simply do the maths. And it comes out that we have a shell gouge ratio for this particular point on the fault of 30.5%. Right. Now let's try a second location. Again, we fix its location. We measure the throw. The throw is constant in our particular model, so it's the same value as we just had for location one. Now let's look at the amount of shale that's gone past that point on the fault. And this is different because it's a different part of the stratigraphic column. So let's look at all these, add them up, and it comes out at 10.0 meters for the sigma z value. Let's plug these values now for throw and sigma z into our SGR formula. Here we are. And if we simply solve this calculation, we see that the SGR for this particular point in the fault is 38.1%. So in comparing our two locations, we see that the shell gouge ratio varies along the fault. And this is because the shale distribution the sum of the thicknesses varies through the stratigraphic column. But what about throw? Well, let's go back and refault this succession, but this time with a smaller throw here. And we'll just do our calculation for one point on the fault. It's here, so we've fixed its location. We measure the throw, and it's now just 7.7 .7 metres. And we sum the shales that have gone past that point on the fault. Is in this case just one rather thin shale interval. So we can sum that up and it's just 0.5 meters. So we have our two values for sigma z and throw. We can plug these into our expression and we find that the SGR for this point on the fault is just 6.5%. So we've seen that the shale gouge ratio varies. It varies with shale distribution so for this single fault scenario with a single value of throw, the SGR still varies because the shale distribution in the original stratigraphic column 
is non-uniform. And we've also seen that the SGR is sensitive to the throw itself. So what do these various values mean? Well, Graham Yielding calibrated SGR against the ceiling properties of faults that were actually measured. And he found for his study area in the North Sea, if the shale gouge ratio was above somewhere between 15 and 20%, that particular part of a fault zone was ceiling. Values lower than 15% meant that fluids were transmitted across the fault. This was for basinal conditions. In other words, whether over geological timescales, fluids had been trapped or transmitted across the fault zone. Since then, it's been found that these sorts of values of 15 to 20 percent is a good threshold for ceiling faults in basins elsewhere in the world. So in our particular scenario here, two of our scenarios are ceiling, where the throw was very large, but for the low throw example, for that particular part of the fault zone, well there the fault would have been able to transmit fluids from one side to the other. So the shale gouge ratio, a really quick parameter to calculate, allowing us to estimate whether faults in the subsurface in sedimentary basins can transmit fluids or are ceiling faults.